Hey, it was a good hockey afternoon, everybody. We got more hockey tonight after a great two games, a surprise win by the Pens and a great battle from the Kraken against the great Vegas Golden Knights team. This is going to be a season preview to the Toronto Maple Leafs, one of the most popular teams in the land, of course, as they do have some great youngsters, of course, in the minors as well in Nick Robertson. They got Rodion Amiro, if you guys got coming up. Rashman Sandin, of course, is still going to develop into something. He's a player you just got to be patient with. He's still young as hell, only 21 years old. And his ability to just smartly think the game, I think, is going to help him in the long run. And he'll eventually get going. And then Robertson, we already know, has a lethal shot, is going to be a beast out there. So you got some co you got some good guys as well. And then you got Toppy Namila, who I actually wanted the Flyers to be able to snag in the um, second round of the draft of 2020, where you guys were able to get him in Toronto, who's a mobile puck mover. He is injury prone a little bit, but he has a high hockey IQ that he's displayed already. So as long as he can get rid of that injury prone tag, then he will be a player that can develop and be very good while he's able to be on the ice. That is for damn sure, I think. And then Timothy Lindgren is another one of those young defensemen you would hope he's able to kind of get it going. He's developing at a much slower rate, um, you would hope to be, but he moves the puck out of the zone well, and he's solid at gap control, especially in the AHL. You would hope he transitions to really kicking ass eventually soon in the NHL, and I think one of those two guys is going to have an emergence this year and really play well, whether it's Sandine or whether it's Lindgren. Obviously, Sandine's going to have more of a chance to do that, probably be in the lineup right away there with Travis Dermott, so you'll be able to do that, but if Lindgren's playing really well down below and Travis Dermott ain't playing too sweet, then he's going to get an opportunity eventually to see what he can showcase as well, but you got Morgan Riley, you got TJ Brody, who was one of the smarter uh, moves to make, of course, last year um, in the offseason, you got Jake Muzzin, you got Justin Hall, who's one of the more underrated defensemen from the right side, so you got a lot of good players on this team, you obviously got other than Justin Hall, all left-handed defensemen, including um, other than um, if you bring up Timothy Lingren, then you would be able to kind of um, lessen that a little bit. But Travis Dermont and Sandine on the same line are two lefties. Obviously, Riley and Brody are. And then you have Muzzin and Hall that goes left-right. So that might draw some incentive, too, to bring up just to have more of a left-right combination going if Lingren's kicking butt down below as well. Um, if they do decide to do that, if he's just going to keep getting scratched or if they're just going to keep scratching him and then not having him play a lot, which I think won't be a benefit at all to him. So it will be interesting to see what you all do up there in Toronto with Timothy Lindgren. Now, when it comes to obviously the offense of this team, you got a guy, Nick Ritchie who you hope is going to look and break out and have an emerging season. He's just entering his prime years of 25, 24, 25 is usually when I consider you're in the peak of your prime years. He had 26 points last year, had a good season. You look for him to now build on 26 points and 56. Tavares is an absolute monster. Obviously, um, Mitch Marner is going to be a game-time decision, so we'll have to see if he's going to be able to go this evening. But he's going to kick butt again. Uh, Michael Bunting is a player that came up and kicked butt, speaking of kicking butt, in 13 games had 21 points. They now, of course, have him, and they're going to be able to see what he can do. You got Alexander Kerfoot, who plays a good 200-foot game. William Nylander, who's obviously a star. And then uh, Andre Kasha, who's one of the bigger wild cards in the league this year, of course, coming off of a long-term injury. You're going to have to see what he's able to do this season. But, of course, has had some good years in the past with the Ducks as a seventh-round pick has really turned himself into a nice player. So let's see what he's going to be able to do. David Comp is another guy that's been around a lot in the AHL and now got 56 games, of course, in the NHL last year. And uh, he had 12 points. Pierre Engvall, you got a solid bottom six. The only question I would have with the Toronto Maple Leafs coming into this season would really be minus the mourners, the William Nylanders, and the uh, John Tavares's of the world. Where is all the other consistent scoring coming from? Because Wayne Simmons now is more of a guy that you just know is going to stick up for your team, play a good role there. Spets is really more where he was at last year at this point, which is a very good role, but more in the bottom six, whether it's your third line or fourth line center. And then Michael Amadio is more of just a rotate-in, rotate-out player. And then Engvall, Comp, and Kase, I like all those guys 
in your bottom six, but they're not guys that you expect to produce at a high rate offensively. You're going to need Michael Bunting to continue to progress. You're going to need Kerfoot to maybe put out a little bit more of an offensive output with the way this lineup shakes out, particularly this evening in the first game, of course, if uh, Mitchell Marner's out. And then you're going to need Nick Ritchie to, I think, put in more of an offensive output and maybe have some more things going from the back end. That's why it will incentivize them to have Sandin really get going and also incentivize them to maybe use Lindgren a little bit quicker if Dermott ain't playing well just because he can move the puck more. He can actually do a little bit more on the offensive end when Timothy Lindgren's at his best than Travis Dermott can't or can, excuse me, who's a good defenseman in his own right, but just more of a just do it as they come, keep it simple, stupid defenseman that um, isn't anything special. That's more of a 6-7 at this point of his career. So you're not going to feel bad putting him in the more depth role and then putting in Lindgren if he does earn that role. And then Austin Matthews, of course, this year. He's day-to-day. Um, but some people have him projected at 60 points, saving the best guy for last, of course. If he's able to get that, then you, or 60 points. 60 goals, I mean, way over 60 points potentially winning the Hart Trophy. I think he has to win it if he gets that. I think he has a chance to get to 60 goals, and hell, that will be a great season if he does that. And then Ilya Mikhaev, of course, is out for about two months. He's a good player, too, when he's able to come back in. So, obviously, you also have Matthews for the scoring, but you're going to need beyond, like, the, the Golden Knights always get limited in the playoffs because they don't have beyond the first two lines. I'm going to be interested to watch who develops for you guys, Maple Leafs fans, to get more of that scoring. Because Michael Bunning's going to move down, you would think, to the third line. Make an Engvall, knock Amadeo out, move to the fourth line. When you have uh, Matthews in, and then especially in two months, when you have Makayev in, you're going to have more guys come out and draw in a little bit more offense there. But for the time being, even when Matthews is in, it's going to be interesting to see other than Michael Bunning, who was able to develop in that bottom six, because that has been hurting you, Maple Leafs fans, when it's come to really being able to be that as good team as you can be with these sexy names I mentioned that are so fun to watch in the Matthews, in the Nylanders, um, obviously in the Mitch Mourners, in the Captain John Tavera, even in Nick Ritchie. He's a hell of a player and a fun player to watch that I think will break out for you this year. And Michael Bunning's a fun player to watch. You need to have other guys develop within that in the bottom six to kind of be that sweet sauce on the top that can help you to get to where the hell you want to go. Because obviously, I know Maple Leafs fans, you don't want to get to the playoffs anymore. You don't want to have the Stephen A. Smiths of the world that don't even know anything much about hockey at all can accuse you of being the Dallas Cowboys of hockey. You don't want that. You want to get to the postseason, and you want to make your mark. And I think having the platoon of Campbell, of Mrazek, this defense is good enough to do that. Now it's on the offense, not the guys obviously I highlighted, but the other guys in that bottom six to pick it up for the top six and not just have to make it rely on them. That's what Vegas did. They brought in more guys. This team brought in a couple guys. Spets had a great season last year. I look for Wayne Train to have a little bit of a better offensive season, but he's limited at this point of his career offensively. Michael Bunning's going to be good when everybody's back in the bottom six role. You're going to need more from that, though. Richie might potentially move down there sometimes to get more out of the bottom six, especially when Mikhaev and others are back. So it's going to be interesting to see from this team, but this team should be a playoff team. Of course, they have them projected to hockey news. You have you guys projected as third. In the Atlantic, I could definitely see you getting second as well. But this is going to be a good team this year. You just got to see more offense through and through to be able to get to the promised land of where you all want to get this season. But you're going to get to the playoffs. It's going to be a good team again, and I think it's going to be a successful season where good guys develop like the Sandines, like the Bunnings continue to develop. Nick Ritchie has a breakout season. So you're going to see a good season in Toronto, Toronto fans. So enjoy the season, Maple Leafs fans. I hope you enjoyed this season preview. Subscribe down below or on the widget up above. That makes it nice and easy. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Peace out, everybody.